Hello YouTubers, Easy as Pie here again. Today I'll be showing you how to replace the magneto or armature or coil or whatever you want to call it on my 5 horsepower Briggs & Stratton flathead tiller engine. For starters I'm just doing a little bit of cleanup on this, uh, peeled off all the dirt, um, get it kind of just brushed down uh, just so it's a little bit easier to work on a little cleaner um, and what you want to do is take off um, the starter shroud here um, so there's a bolt on the top and one on either side of this unit here there's it's back in here um, and I've actually already taken those off just for um, time's sake here. And what I noticed whenever I was spinning uh, the flywheel here, I've got a lot of this stuff loose already just for um, demonstration purposes, but whenever I turned the flywheel um, I was getting no spark whatsoever um, and that was pretty much telling me that it most likely wasn't the armature there. So I disconnected the coil wire um, and continue to test it, still no spark, changed out the spark plug, still no spark. So I'm pretty sure this engine will never start seeing as this coil is most likely dead. So I ordered myself a new one. As far as removing this particular unit, it's just as simple as pulling out these two bolts here, disconnecting your kill switch from the side of the motor, um, and yanking your ignition wire, and the entire unit comes off. As you're taking your engine down, I also notice that just as you're testing this, I like to take this off. Um, when you're spinning this around, it's got a lot of sharp edges on it for two bolts. I, I save myself the headache and just get this out of the way. And here is the new module. And it actually came with this handy guide that says this side out, which I completely understand why they'd probably need to put that on there, seeing as the unit looks backwards compared to this one. Now, I know they made some changes over to these over the years to make them operate better and take away some of the uh, complications of these engines. Um, I can't actually explain to you why this unit is backwards. I'm assuming it has something to do with the uh, polarity of the flywheel and how all that um, operates. So I'm going to put the armature of the magneto back in place, put my two bolts in, and then place a heavy piece of cardstock approximately the same thickness as a business card between the magneto and the flywheel. So I've got a couple layers of sandpaper that I'm just using as my um, thickness. And you'll see this armature actually didn't come with the kill wire like my last one. So I just cannibalized the wire off my old unit and then just put a uh, female connector on here. And I'll just uh, slide that on and that should function the way it's supposed to. And a couple quick notes. Uh, if you have the uh, deflector here, make sure and put it on before you get your armature tightened up, the bolt goes through it. Um, as you're taking this card out, just turn the flywheel and it should come out. And as you get away from it, when you put this on, uh, facing towards it as you're tightening up the bolts and then just turn it away uh, as you're pulling off that piece of paper like I did. Um, and then one last note as you're tightening up these bolts, just go easy on them, uh, hand tighten these, you're threading steel into aluminum and it, this is really easy to strip out and if you do, you're not going to like the results. Alrighty, so before whenever I was testing out uh, the arm or the coil here and the spark plug, uh, I wasn't sure if I was spinning the flywheel fast enough to get a spark, um, so I would kind of contracted this device here to stick on the end here and uh, put into my drill and it spun it really quickly and I never received a shock or even saw a spark for that matter and I'm glad I didn't get that far to this time. I had put on the new spark plug, I would simply turn it over by hand almost that quickly. I thought I had it grounded well enough on the uh, engine casing here but apparently not because I received a pretty good shock just by turning it by hand so 
if you're going to try and get a spark out of this thing, you don't need the uh, assistance of a drill or anything. Just turn it by hand at about that speed and you'll get more than enough spark out of this unit. Now that you've got your magnetron on, your kill switch rewired to the engine block, uh, or the block down here below, and your spark plug fed through the, the uh, hole in which it's supposed to go through, you can go ahead and put uh, your engine shroud back on. Now, it's worth mentioning, on this particular unit, the uh, model type and code for the engine is right on the side of this unit. It took me a little while to figure out where it would be at, so I will simply put this back on and re-thread the bolts and I'll be done. The bolts are now tightened and the engine shroud is completely on. I've got my spark plug and uh, everything tightened on there and connected. Um, and that's really all there is to this particular project. Uh, remember, when you're working on these, all you really need are, or you should have right away, are spark, fuel, and compression. Um, this is the first thing I looked at with spark. It's one of the easier to check, and that was definitely what the case was. Um, engines are not near as complicated as a person might imagine. You can do just about anything these days, especially with the internet, and that's kind of why I, I try and make these videos, help people out. Um.